Hello, I am Dave Olalab with the South Dakota Soil Health Coalition and the Soil Health Specialist. Today we're going to talk about calibrating a 1590 John Deere no-till drill. Um, it becomes a big necessity to have the drill calibrated correctly so we can get the correct seeding rates uh, into the ground. And that even becomes more important as we introduce cover crops and various mixes into the seed box, we have a lot of different seed sizes. Also, um, just in general seed, wheat, or oats, uh, we'll see varying sizes in the seed, and that can impact the seeding rate as well. So it just pays to take a little time and follow these steps that we'll cover today to calibrate your drill so you know you're getting the accurate seed rate off. To complete the calibration, procedures for the drill, we need a few items to accomplish this task. A little twine to measure the circumference of the drive wheel, tape measure, a marking pen or tape to mark on the wheel to count the revolutions, a scale that will measure in grams and ounces, uh, the seed that we are going to use to plant with, as well as a jack to raise the drive wheel to spin it, a calculator and pen, and the all-important directions for the drill calibration. Our first step is to note the number of seed cups and the machine width and to write that down on our paper so that we have that to refer to later on. In the case of a 1590 drill, we have 24 cups in a 15 foot width. Step two requires us to determine the circumference of the seed meter and wheel. And as we do that, we need to consider the soil conditions as to whether they are firm or soft because that will impact how deep the lugs uh, deflect into the soil. So in this case, we're going to assume it's a firm seed bed. The lugs are going to ride on the surface of the soil. So we will measure where that is at. And as we come to the end, we arrive at 95 inches. We can now make note of that number and include it into our calculations to determine the number of rotations we need to make of that tire in covering one acre. In step three, we determine the number of rotations of the seed metering drive wheel that are needed to work out a 1 20th of an acre. So using the information from step two of the 95 inches, we divided it by 12 to get a 7.92 feet of circumference of the drive wheel. With the following calculations in the example using a 15 foot wide drill, we can use those as well to determine that we need to go 145.2 linear feet to cover 1 20th of an acre at 15 feet wide. So we take the 145.2, divide it by 7.92 feet of wheel circumference, and that equates to 18 and a third rotations that we must make to replicate that 1 20th of an acre. Step four, which is the collection of the seed, has a number of setups. And one is to take the seed that you are using or planning on planting and place it into the drill box in four to six locations of feeding cups so you get a more accurate 
measurement. The more cups you use and collect from, the more accuracy you're going to have. Now we look at our chart to determine what notch we need to set our metering cam at for wheat in this case. And if we wish to put on one bushel or 60 pounds, we will set it at the 14 notch setting. When setting our metering rate, we need to make sure we know which side of the lever we're looking at. And in this case, it's on the left side as we face it. 14 was our number. So we're going to be one notch past this hash for 15. But it's best to adjust your meter past where you want it and then bring it back to that notch so you'll get a more accurate setting. Okay, we have it on 14. We have our seed metering cups set up in the highest notch for wheat. And we have removed a tube and replaced four of the seeding tubes with Ziploc bags. Now we're ready to rotate our tire to replicate as if we were seeding and collect our samples. We have our tire jacked up. We've made a mark. I've used a marking pen and a piece of tape to provide the example to help with our count. A reminder with these rear wheel driven seeders that the seed discs need to be in the down position for the drive to engage and to meter seed. So now we're going to count 18 rotations and a third and then we will collect our samples and weigh them up. There's 18 and a third. And I also want to remind you that a lot of these 1590s come with a slow speed gear or half speed drive and you need to factor that in on your seating rate. Okay, I have collected my four bags of seed and have put them into one bag. I need to turn on my scale and tear my bag. And now I can put on my seed and that comes right out to eight ounces collected. So then into step five, we use that information. We take our eight ounces from the four cups collected and take it times six to account for the 24 cups and then times 20 to factor in the 1 20th of an acre. That comes out to 960 ounces. And if I divide that by 16 ounces per pound, it equates into 60 pounds per acre, which is what I was targeting and shows that my drill is spot on for that setting, for that size of wheat with the humidity that is has at present. Now, if that number didn't come out correctly, if it was too low, then I would need to move my 
seed metering lever up one or two and then turn my wheel again collect my seed and weigh and factor it out if it was too high or too much being applied then i would set my metering level down and repeat those steps once you get your drill calibrated for the first time and go through the steps you'll find that every time you do that following it will become a lot easier and you'll have more confidence in your seeding accuracy. I would also encourage you that once you do have it calibrated and get ready to begin seeding that you keep track of the amount of seed that you place in your drill, whether it's filling it to capacity and knowing the bushels of the seed tank or keeping track of how many totes as well as 50 pound bags or just weighing each five gallon bucket as you put it in there. Remember that calibrating helps especially when using multi-species cover crop mixes that have a lot of different seed sizes. It's important to calibrate that so you get a very accurate seeding rate. If you run into questions or need more direction regarding calibrating your no-till drill, certainly contact the South Dakota Soil Health Coalition. There are a number of soil health specialists and technicians that would be happy to help you. Thank you.